So multiple different KRAS uh, altered uh, non-small cell lung cancers. Uh, G12C is the most common KRAS uh, mutation that we see in non-small cell and many different presentations uh, presented this year at ASCO. I'll focus on three specific presentations. First one presented by my colleague, Dr. Fernando Scalides, who looked at the Cobrake 200. Uh, before we jump into the study, it's important to note that there are two FDA approved KRAS G12C inhibitors in non-small cell lung cancer approved in the second line setting. Uh, these are sotorasib and adagrasib. Now, Codebreak 200 was the confirmatory phase three trial of sotorasib versus docetaxel. A positive study for progression-free survival, negative for overall survival, although it was not powered to show overall survival. Dr. Scalidi's presentation looks at a very important question. Is there a difference in the subsets of co-altered patients? STK11, KEEP1, we know these are patients who do not do well with immunotherapy. How do they do with with sotorasib versus docetaxel. So it's interesting to note that there was no difference in response rate or duration of response between those who had co-alterations and those who did not, or in the different subsets of patients received sotorasib or docetaxel. One important thing to note is that if you had a point mutation in KRAS or secondary alterations in KRAS or other KRAS alterations, such as G12V or G12D, those patients did not respond to sotorasib. So important that these are medicines specifically for G12C. And if you have other co-alterations in the RAS pathway, these therapies may not be effective. Uh, the other presentation that was really exciting uh, was uh, from uh, the JDQ443. This is a novel, potent KRAS G12C uh, inhibitor, very similar to sotorasib and adagrasib. A small study, uh, so this is a phase one dose escalation followed by an expansion. We saw toxicity data for 90 some odd patients in the uh, evaluation set. It seems to be a very clean drug, grade one, two GI side effects, um, but no significant grade grade three events seems to be a little bit cleaner uh, than adagrasib at the moment. When we look at the efficacy data, the efficacy data set is very small. It's about 20 non-eyed patients, and the response rate overall in all patients in dose escalation is about 44.4%. But when you look at those patients who are treated at the recommended phase two dose, the 200 milligrams twice a day, the response rates are an astonishing 57.1%. We all worry about hepatotoxicity here with these agents, very little hepatotoxicity with this drug, uh, mostly grade one, two, uh, I think one or only one grade three event in this setting. So what is the potential possibility here in the future? JDQ443, we obviously need to see more data, very early study. Um, we're looking at this drug in combination with tisilizumab, which is a pdl one inhibitor. We are also looking at it in combination with TNO155, a SHIP2 inhibitor. Um, I think this potentially has the possibility to move to the frontline setting in combination with a PDL1 inhibitor pending any toxicity. And we know that sotorasib plus a PD1 or PDL1 inhibitor is toxic given the transaminitis. We've seen data for adagrasib, which looks to be relatively safe in combination, although somewhat higher tox in the GI setting. We're hoping that JDQ443 may have uh, a, a safer profile. Important to note another agent, uh, LOXO982 or Lily982, that is another KRAS G12C inhibitor that was just presented at ACR that may have a very similar activity, right? Response rates in that 40% range, and we do know that it may be safe to combine with PD-1 inhibitor at the moment. So a very exciting time for our patients, uh, and obviously in the field of KRAS G12C altered non-small cell lung cancer.